opinion. I feel like that was just opinion. How about you saw it in your mouth? Let me see if you did your homework. Yes, I did. Or I don't think this way. You did like half of it. I didn't half of it. It was three problems. I didn't think of the problems. It was actually four. What happened to number 11? Oh, I didn't know that was Oh, no. Number 11. Four out of five. Oh, I didn't do one. I didn't see it. You didn't do number seven either, dude. Let me help you. Number seven. Number seven. Number seven. You're plugging one in for X, right? What's three times one? Three. What's three plus four? Nine. Mm. Yeah, what's three times negative one? The only thing I screwed up on was the graph. Negative three. Are you sure you work on that little? I appreciate that. Negative three. And then negative three plus four? Mm. You can't do seven or eleven? No. Oh my goodness. How much debt? I have three pointed. I'm fine. I always. Wait, 11. I want to give you a Christmas card. I got distracted. Mm hmm. I need to get one of those graphs. You guys ready? Do you have your homework? Yeah. Mm hmm. He's got to get it, sir. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm just kidding, so you graphic right here. We're about to go over. Okay. Okay, um, before we go over 7 and 11, students have asked questions about 7 all day today, so I, I get it. Um, but what questions do you have on 2 and 5 before we look at 7 and 11? Got them right? We understand how to do those two? Oh, I didn't pick E, I just picked A. Or C. C, you mean? Yeah. Gotcha. Make sure you check more than one. Tomorrow's a check for accuracy, so you need to know how to check all of them. And also, I will say this. I know I'm not showing any work, but that's because I just want you to be able to quickly say, hey, I got it right or wrong, and then say, hey, I need to ask a question. But when I look around at most people's papers yesterday and today, and in other classes, I'm not seeing any work, right? I, Layla, I think you did a great job of showing work and justifying how you got your answers. One, you need to practice justifying on the homework so that when it comes time for test and understanding checks, you're justifying on those as well. You play in the game just like you practice it, uh, or just like you, how you do in practice. The quizzes, the understanding checks, the tests, those are your games. You're going to perform there how you're doing on the understanding, or on the homeworks. Make sure you're showing your work. Yes, correct. So you both share work on number five? Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I mean, how did you know it was one, two, and four without showing some kind of work? A lucky guess. Yeah, lucky guesses don't get you there. <clears throat> Come on, man, I'm a good guesser. No. So, this at this two right here, what can it take the place of? Eight. So you're telling me that this is two times two plus four y equals eight. Yes. There's the start. There's an equation. And I might simplify it, and now I have an equation that I could solve. What can I do to solve this equation? Yeah, I want this y. The first thing being done to is multiply by 4, then we're adding 4, so we're subtracting 4. Notice 4 minus 4 is that good old 0. So 4y is equal to 4. Now what would I do? Divide. By 4? So y is equal to? Is that some work justifying why when x is 2, y is 1? You need to justify your answers. I did. I worry. I'm more showing this so that when you do the problems for homework tonight, you're good to go and can earn all the credit. Not working it out. Not working it out. Any questions about 2 and 5 before we move on, though? Time. No, I'm just playing now. I do have a question on 7 though. Yes, everyone has questions on 7. Let's address 11 first, and then we'll talk about 7. Oh my goodness. What? 11. Okay. Number 11, what questions do you have there? Everything. That, that's not a question. You, had, you didn't even try it. Yeah, but that, I 
You have no clue nope. how to solve for x. You oh. have 10 oh, yeah, yeah, minus yeah. 3 yeah, x. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, I know, I know. So then why don't you try it? You add 10 to each side. You all agree that we add 10? Yeah, they agree. I have no. agree. And then it'd be 0. You sure? Y'all agree? I don't know what you said, so yeah. Zero. Say that again? Oh. 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 oh! oh, no, it's my fault. It's my fault. It's a trap, my fault. You know, you know I'm Miss King. You know, you That's know. why I asked, are you sure? <laughs> you know I, mean. I asked if y'all agree. <laughs> so we need to slow down. We need to recognize we are trying to create that zero, so make sure you do that. But see, Shelby don't want to correct anybody but me, so. Exactly. <laughs> I, to correct. I didn't try. She didn't try. She didn't have anything, so, so she has nothing to correct. Also, Peyton, weirdly enough, this class is not just about the two of you and your rivalry. I understand that you're salty that Shelby's <laughs> correcting all the time. Everything. Every single thing. But what is, so notice the though, Corral, 10 minus 10 20. is? Zero. And then 28 minus 10 is? 18. Okay, so what do I need to write on the left-hand side? 3x. No. This zero. is the same mistake that everyone else is making. You're not paying attention. What is 0 minus 3x? 3x. Nope. Three. 0 minus 3x? What would 0 minus 5 be? Uh, negative 5. Negative 3. The answer is negative 3. Not negative 3. Negative 3. Oh, because it's uh, uh, negative minus 3. Yeah, where would that negative go? It doesn't just magically disappear, does it? Nope. Notice 0 plus 5 would be 5. Okay. 0 minus 5 would be negative 5. 0 plus 3x would be 3x. But we're taking away 3x, so we need minus 3x, or negative 3x. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. And that's not just you. Please understand. I knew that mistake was about to happen for somebody because it's happened in every class today. But we need to recognize that when we do 0 minus, it's going to be a negative. What would be my last step to solve this? Divide 3. Negative 3. Okay, and see, that's important as well. We've got to divide by a negative 3. Now, I want you to notice, in my final answer... I have a greater than, even though I had a less than right here. I divide by negative, so what had to happen? You have to flip it, switch. When you say flip it, switch what? What's the proper mathematical language there? Reversing, Reversing the direction of the inequality, right? The idea is that it was going to the left, we reverse the direction, so it is now going to the right. That ties back to the idea of an arrow. You can reverse the direction of an arrow. You're not going to say, oh, I switched the arrow, or I flipped the arrow. You're going to say you reversed the direction of it to be more clear. Okay? Then I just graphed the, the solutions on the number line. I went to my negative 6. Why did I shade to the right? That's what makes the inequality true, right? Is 0 greater than negative 6? Is 5 greater than negative 6? Yes. So that's how I knew how to, where to shade. And that's really what B and C were all about as well, right? Select an x value from your graph. Replace x in the original inequality. Does the inequality hold true? And so we should recognize the whole point of all this work is that each of these inequalities that I am shading right here are what to each other? Each of the inequalities that I just circled are what to each other? Not equal is closer to the same. Equivalent. Equivalent, right? Equal means that they are literally exactly the same, but equivalent means that they're effectively the same. They have the same solution set. They, I mean, you can look at them. Do they look identical? Yes. No. No, they don't look identical. Do they have the same solution set? Yes. Right? Everything that makes this inequality true will make that one this one true and that one true. Right? Notice everything that made this one false also is making the original false. Does that make sense? We come comfortable with those ideas. Ready to rock and roll from there? Yes. So let's look at number seven. What threw us off about this one? Let's see what? What threw us off on number seven here? You How left your sheet here. Say again. How do you know to put that line there? 
So remember when we did number 10 in class yesterday at the end of class? And the first note I made to you was oh, yeah, 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 yeah. graph the line for the equation or something to that effect. So instead of looking at the inequality, I'm going to look at the equation. What should that equation remind us of instantly? Y equals what? Mx plus 3. What, what's the name of that equation? Uh, Point slope. Yeah. So close. Uh, uh, slope, yeah. The other one. Yeah, the other one. Remember, point slope, uh, point slope and is slope this one. Right. So Notice how you have an x and a y, which is creating a point. Ooh. Right? Point slope literally has a point and a slope. That's why we call it point slope. But right here I see slope intercept. And so there's a couple different ways that you can approach this. We really should, by this point, understand, hey, if I have a slope and a y-intercept, I can just use those two things to graph it. But if you don't, that's okay. Is it? Yes, because what's another mathematical representation that you could create, bro? A Krill? table. A table. I mean, <laughs> we're trying to table. get to a graph. My fault. I'm at table. But you remember how I had you put a table, bro? <laughs> what x values did I tell you to put on that table? Negative one, zero, and one. Let's plug in this zero first. That's my x, zero. What's three times zero? Three. Zero. Zero. Zero, zero plus four? Dude. Four. 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 Hey, what's my y-intercept? Four. And the y-intercept is the output when the input is? Zero. Hey. Wow. Zero, one, two, three, four. So I go to the y-axis. I put a point of, at four. I did that. Notice, you could, just go, uh, you could just go straight to the equation and say the y-intercept is 4, plot it, but you can also make a table, plug in your 0, and get out the 4. It's going to give you the same thing. Right? Mm -hmm. Now let's plug a 1 in. What's 3 times 1? 3. 3 plus 4? 7. And uh, what's my slope, my additive rate of change? 3. Three. 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 Up 3 over 1. Go over 1. Up 3 over 1. So remember, over slope up three. is rise divided by... I Run. And so. it's just the number three. So what's understood to be dividing? One. one. So rise three, run one. Is that the point one seven? No. Yes. yes. What do you not understand? That. Explain that to me. What, what part? The part that you're going over three and over one. Okay. So you understand that this is my y-intercept, right? Oh, never mind. I see. I see. I see. I see. I see. I see. Are you sure? Yes, I pause. I see. I, okay. I understand. Bro. My day. Today has been. It's just one of those days? Crazy. It's okay to make mistakes. Remember that. I'm okay with that 100%. Right? Mistakes are just opportunities to learn. So if you have a question, ask it. No, I get it now. Okay. I really get it. But we need to notice that that's the y-intercept, and here's my slope. And so I knew the slope. The rise divided by the run was 3. So I just knew it had to be over 1. Um, now... I also will point out that you can make this a negative 3 divided by a negative 1. Because what's a negative divided by a negative? Positive. That's also going to be that positive 3. Which, because it's negative, instead of going up, I'm going to go down. down. 3 and go over 1. Plug a negative 1 in. What's 3 times negative 1? Negative 3 plus 4? 1. Is that the same as this point? So I will make this note, you can very easily make a table. Personally, it's a little bit quicker to just use my slope and my y-intercept, so that's what I do. I go to my y-intercept and I use the slope, the rise and the run. But if you're not comfortable with that, that's okay. I need you to do something though, and I need you to make a table or something else. There's down three to the left one, right? So there's my line. However, is this an actual equation right here for number seven? Um. This is not my house. I shouldn't be getting lost this much. Uh, I don't know. I mean, what I just circled, is this an equation? Yes. No, no. it doesn't have an equal sign. It doesn't have an equal sign. It's a what? Inequality. Inequality. 
And we want to find what makes this inequality true. True. Notice true. it says, name one point that is a solution. I mean, really any point on the graph that you just mark. Just any point? Any point that you just mark that's on that line makes it true. That is true, but this is inequality. When we look at a number line, like here, did I just mark the negative 6? It's anything on the number line that makes it true. Anything on the number line? No. So unless I mark the negative 6 and then I shaded ah. everything that made the inequality true, right? Mm -hmm. I marked my boundary line. But notice if I pick this point right here, that's the point negative 2, 5. That's actually the work I did right here. But I'll redo it. My y value is 5. Less than or equal to 3 times my x value of negative 2. What's negative 6 plus 4? 2. Close. Negative. Negative 2. Is 5 less than or equal to negative 2? It's um, greater than negative 2. Yeah, so is it less than or equal to? No. So does that point make this inequality true? No. So I didn't shade above the line. I but said any point on the line makes it true. What about 0, 0? That's not on the line. Is 0 less than or equal to 3 times 0 plus 4? So that would be 0 is less than or equal to 0 plus 4? Is that a true statement? Yep. So is it just the stuff on the line? So be careful about that. Be careful about that. And because that's what I was tempted to say when I was in high school as well, and it messed me up in the next class or so. My brain's about to have a spontaneous It's not question. to the right. It's oh. below. Well, oh, oh. Look at this inequality. Why is less oh, than? Okay. Right? Yeah. If I'm going to the right, is that a less than? Mm. No. If I'm going down, is that less than? Yes. So when we talk about these uh, inequalities, we don't want to think left and right. That will mess you up. You want to think uh, up and down. Notice I'm going below the line. Now, as a result, because this line will extend forever, notice all of this is below it as well. So we would shade, in this instance, everything to the right. What? She said that, and then you said no, and now you're saying yes. You are, oh my goodness. Peyton, you clearly didn't listen. Anything below the line, you said the line goes forever, so technically it is everything shaded to the right. However, Peyton, if you shade to the right, is going to the right greater than or is it less than? Going to the right greater than. Oh, but that inequality says what? It says, I don't know. <laughs> Which is why I was saying you want to focus on it's going below the line. Does it, you see that now? Yeah. I need you to listen. I literally just went over that. And he, I, I get it. And, and I even said that. That's what I was tempted to do when I was in high school when I was first learning. I thought about left and right as well. However, that will mess you up because to the right is greater than. It's not to the right. It's below the line, which matches this inequality of less than. Michigan, if anybody ever insults you, please don't take it personally. We don't hate you. We just hate the subject you teach. I mean, I hear you, but also, I want you to get better, and I more I just want you to problem. listen when I talk 30 seconds before you get upset. <laughs> yeah, that's the problem. Yeah. You actually care. Stop caring. I know. Mr. Kitty's the worst. He actually gives a crap about us. I know. It sucks. <laughs> We always Does that make more period. sense, though? Yes, sir. That's why I was saying yesterday, graph the line for the equation, and then two, I was saying find the solutions, right? Find what makes the inequality true. It's either going to be above the line or it's going to be below the line. And you're going to shade those solutions. And we're going to learn more about that with today's task. So all I study shade, it makes that true? Hmm? So all I study shade, it makes it true? Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh. Remember here, like, I only tested maybe the number zero, but by knowing zero was a solution, I knew everything to the right was a solution, everything, everything to the left was not, right? So here, you can test a couple points, but if you test the ones below it, everything below makes the inequality true, everything above will make it false. So in that test at that point above, it did not make the inequality true, I tested this number, or this point, which did make it true. 
And so notice it's that, because here's that boundary line, it's actually really important, we'll come back to this. I can identify and interpret the boundary lines. That is my boundary line, which don't ignore that because that's a little bit of a curve. But there's a boundary line in there, right? And then I shaded one half of it, which is identifying all values that satisfy the constraints through a shaded half point. Does that look like a shaded half point to you? Yep. It's literally half of the plane, isn't it? So that's what I want you to notice on that. You good with that? Yes, sir. Cool. All right. So let's get started with today. We're a little bit behind, but we'll be okay because I think we actually talked about some important things to notice for today. Um, so let's look at our objectives. Uh, then we'll get back to 5.2. Uh, too big or not too big, that is a question. Um, I believe Peyton and Kelsey, I still owe you all a free homework. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Wow. I'll put that in as soon as I let you all start wait, uh, working it. I, I, I did this one. Just, just wait till tomorrow when I do it for action. I was, I was just going to go back to one you already didn't do and give you credit for it. Okay, that works too. Okay. So, 5.2, too big or not too big, that is the question, which if you missed it yesterday, what play was that from? Hamlet. 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 Yes. Did I get punished myself? No. You did not tell me before they did, unfortunately. Uh, so, too big or too not, not too big, that is the to be or not to be, that is a question that Hamlet is asking at the beginning of some act of the play. I don't remember. Peyton was very emphatic about it yesterday. Act uh, <laughs> 3, starting. Opening scene, scenes. right, of, of Act yes. 3. Okay, uh, we already kind of went over these objectives, so let's go over them really quickly again. Shelby, can you read our first objective for us? I can identify and interpret the boundary lines for the constraints of the scenario. Please notice, it's not just identify the boundary lines, right? We identified it earlier, but we also want to interpret what they mean. What do these boundary lines mean in context of the problem of the cats and the dogs? Desiree, can you read our second objective for us? I can identify all values that satisfy the constraints of an inequality through a shaded half line. Right. If we have this boundary line and we have a whole bunch of things that are making the inequality true, we can't just pick a few of them. We have to shade everything just like we did inequalities last unit when it was one variable. We shaded a whole section of the number line, right? This time we've got to shade a half plane. Yes, sir. So we're spending like a week or two on this, right? Why? No, I'm saying like just in general, I usually speak, I spend like a week or two on stuff. So when they do Algebra 1A and 1B together like next year, how are they going to do that? Well, we slow this down significantly. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm like, so bad for those kids. We spend like two weeks doing this. How long would they do it? I mean, literally it would be half of the time that you all have. However, when you mix the groups together better, then you more aptly have students that can help other students, so you can actually help everyone better. There's a lot of research behind it where, so like the issue right now is that things are very leveled in the sense that like you have your pre-APs, you have your honors, and then you have your regular classes, mm -hmm. right? So this new course is designed to mix all of them together so that students have better resources with each other to ask each other questions and you'll actually be able to learn better that way. Mm. Yeah. So, like last year, right, I was making like B's and C's barely in the class and this year I'm making like A's and D's, so what do you think I'd have if I would have taken out of one A and my B together? Not, it doesn't really matter. You're learning, that's what matters. All right, so did everyone finish numbers one through three, find these combinations of cats and dogs for each section? Yeah. We got through that, right? Uh, did everyone, who did, did, or let's see, who got numbers four and five complete? I did four. Four and five? Four and five. Four and five. I did four. Did you all get four and five? I think we have some Oh, we all got four and five? I did four. Me, I got four and five. I got four. Corel, you and Layla did not? I got four. I got we all have four and five. We're going to go ahead and go over these. That's what I'm asking. You know how quiet they're on five? Layla, did you get it? You didn't get quite your five? Okay. So here's what I want you to do. Layla and Corella will come and check on you first. I want you to go ahead and uh, start working on four and five. The other two groups, if you're already done with four and five, go ahead and move on to six and seven. Six should be very straightforward. Seven, you may need to think about a little bit. What I will make a note of to you on number seven is... You should think about number five to help you with number seven. Sound good? Okay. So go ahead and start working within your groups, uh, trying to knock out numbers four and five, uh, or Corel. 
Corel and Layla four and five, and the rest of the group six and seven. You mean five? Okay, five because you already did four. I'm so 